Good morning guys, it is the fourth or fifth day we've been going out now. Now today's goal is to put a smack down on the mutton snapper. Yesterday, we did good. Brian got his biggest mutton snapper. Brooke got her biggest mutton snapper. I got one of my biggest mutton snappers. Fisher's trying to get on the Today. mutton snappers yep. too. We got Gabby as well. We got the killer crew out here again. We should make things happen, stay tuned. Okay, we just rolled up to the spot and we got some not so favorable conditions. The wind's going this way, south. The current's going that way, north, which means we're gonna have to fish towards our anchor line. And uh, yeah, but we're gonna make it happen. No excuses on the boat. Okay, we got a six ounce egg sinker sliding rub right above my swivel. And I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the rig here in a second. You need not. There it is. There it is. Fisher's on the first yeah. mutton of the day up there. Get him, fish. Yeah. That didn't take long, did it? Now, the secret to mutton fishing, like everyone knows, or what people say, is a long leader. And let me tell you something, it's true. The longer the leader, the better, especially when you got good current going. So, what I'm doing is, I got just 40 pound mono. You don't need floral for this. It's got 40 pound mono. We're gonna do about 30 feet of it, all right? Come on, Fisher! Brick, if you give me your camera, I'll film you grabbing it. Definitely not a neal. It's, it's a mutton. It's a mutton. Yeah. Oh, you can see it already? Yeah. Good. It's a nice one. Oh, yeah, baby! Oh, look at that. Look at that fish! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yeah, Giant! Yeah. Oh, man! Giant. Yeah! Look at that pig! Five minutes on this spot and fish are already hooked up into a giant mutton. Come hold your fish. Do a good job, bro. I think first mine in my life and it's a big one. All right, here's our bait right here. This is a ballyhoo plug with the head cut off and the tail cut off. Take my circle hook right here. Hook it right here towards the back of the bait. And now is what you gotta do is right here. Toss your bait way out there. Straighten up your leader. Make sure there's no kinks in it like this right here. There we go. Get your bait as far away from the boat as possible. Keep your line staggered. Brian's line's right there. My line's gonna be to the left. Brooke's gonna be on the right. And that's the way you gotta do it. Yeah, but he picked it up and dropped it the first time. Yeah, right? he did. did he? Yeah, yeah. He, he hit it. That's what they'll do. It was gone. That's what they'll do. Down and he just... Sometimes they swim at you and they're there. You got them. Yep. Oh. Oh boy. Well, none of us have gotten hit for a while, so I'm dropping down to even lighter leader. I got 30 pound fluoro, really small circle hook. Let's see if that makes a difference. And if not, then they're just not biting because we know they're here. So everyone's fishing. Well, Brian's got a, a live pin fish on. There's Fisher's Martin. I'm gonna try the tried and true meat missile that we always talk about. So. The whole thing with meat missiles, don't want too big of a bait. Because if you got too big of a bait, number one, you're going to be attracting shark. And uh, you just don't need it. You want a nice big bait, but not too big. Brooke, that's, that's a, fish. a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> Brooke just had a screaming run up there. See? A nice little meat missile like that. Perfect little strip. Brooke. Oh, my hook pulled. Really good run too. Mm -hmm. Look, all the way up here. Mm -hmm. Retie completely. Retie. Brooke just got a bite, and she's on. Get in my Brooke. Oh yeah. You're not gonna. No, no, come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Brooke's on. You got him, babe. Oh. What the heck? 
must be a ledge over here. I keep throwing on the same freaking side, and there must be a ledge, and every single time I get cut off on the freaking ledge. Yeah. All right. All right. Are you on, Vic? Oh, yeah. Going for a walk. Victor is hooked up. I'm swimming right at me. It's not very big. If it's this stupid remora, oh. if it's a mutton, it's tiny. Oh, ah. You might jump? It was a little shark, yeah. No, it doesn't feel like it. Whatever it is, it wants to stay on bottom. Brooke's got a fish on. Yeah, whatever this was came out of wherever he was. Well, I got a mystery fish on. I got no idea what it is. At first, I thought it was a grouper or mutton, and then it just turned into complete dead weight, dead weight, which is usually indicative of a shark, something like a nurse shark, because I was fishing with that bonita. And now I put the rod in the rod holder, and it's not doing anything, which makes me think that it's a grouper under a rock, right? That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. So I'm just going to let it sit there patiently. Hopefully, it comes out. Because I couldn't imagine a nurse shark to just sit there the whole time. It would take some line at least, so I'll let you know what happens. He's out. Mystery fish is out of the rock and uh, on the move. <laughs> Maybe it's a stingray. Stingrays bury themselves. Do they? Yeah. I think it's a stingray. You do, A huh? big stingray. Wasn't a shark. Unless it decided to take a nap and just wake up. <laughs> we, when we used to catch the giant ones off of the pier, they would bury themselves and no matter what you did, you could have a hundred pound test, you couldn't get them out of the sand. No? No. But I think you're right. What else does that? That explains not breaking off. Yeah. He wasn't under a ledge, he was just buried. Well, the mystery fish continues to be a mystery, but it's actually taking some line now. He goes from just, I, I think it's a stingray that just keeps burying itself and then gets pissed off and then takes some line. Right now, he's on his run, taking a little bit of line at a time. And yeah, yeah. So this could be a four hour fight, 10 more minute fight. We have no idea. It could be a thousand pound stingray or it could be a hundred pound stingray. You never know. He's still taking line? He's still taking line. He's heading offshore. Oh, we're at the mono! We're almost there. You have you there my camera? Yeah. You had that mono in before. Yeah, but this time he's Something he's gotta be beat. Yeah. This time he's gotta be beat. You come here! <laughs> oh, oh no! no! You broke off right here. Man! Now we'll never know. We'll no. never know. <laughs> Come on! That means it was only 50 feet under the boat. I thought, I thought your rod broke at first. I know, when you heard that pop, I thought it hit the T-top and broke. Luckily it didn't. All right, let's see if what... Hey Brian, I'm going with the pinfish, so you can't say that they don't work. You going down with a pinfish? Yep. Going down with a pinfish. Oh, where is my mutton? Oh, where is my mutton? I'll keep an eye on this pole, this big pole. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm pretty fast. I might be there before you do. <laughs> Fisher's on! Uh oh, what happened? Oh, he came back! Get out of there, bro. Hold on to that. 
Man, Fisher, you are just, was that on a pinfish? Yeah. Woo! Two up us. You got quite the stance up there, Fisher. Mm hmm I ain't losing this guy. The power That's the power. right one. How you like that rod and reel? Oh, I love it. So this one was on a live pinfish. And again, sitting on the bottom for like five, five, ten minutes. Another Beautiful. giant mutton. Oh. Look at that hook, Fisher. Look at this thing. That is barely, look at how he's hooked. Look at that. Take it right out. The barb isn't even in there. He was barely. Oh my barely, gosh. Barely, barely hooked. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, he threw up. Ooh, he did throw up. Oh, what is that thing? It's a. Uh, it. It smells really bad. But it, <laughs> I don't know. It looks like some kind of. It's long. I don't know what it is. Already? Man, I can't get a bite to save my life today. I must be putting fish repellent on my hooks or something. I've tried everything. Bonita. Ballyhoo, pinfish. I mean, I'll put them right where you are. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys, as you see, we are back at the dock. Now, I didn't catch any muttons today, but Big Bro Fisher got two big beast muttons. Brooke, he's my little bro. Her little bro, but he's a big guy. So, Brooke got a mutton too. Yep. And uh, me and Brian did not do so hot today. I hooked that giant mystery fish, which we still do not know. I think it was a stingray. Brooke thinks it possibly could have been a Goliath grouper. No, no, no. A Warsaw grouper. A Warsaw a grouper. A giant Warsaw grouper. The reason I don't think it was is because when I first hooked it, it never really ran. It, it kind of buried itself, which we thought it was a grouper that was stuck in the ledge. But it turned out to come out whatever it was in. I think it was a stingray that buried itself in the sand. I remember as a kid when we hooked stingrays at the pier that's what they would do they'd make a run and then they'd bury themselves and you could have three guys yanking on the line and it would not budge until that stingray was ready to come out of the sand and go and that's what it did it went out of the sand or whatever it was in went and i got it really really close i had probably only 50 feet of line down underneath the boat and it just popped right there but let me show you guys some of the fish that we caught so yeah, that's the big one. So this is the biggest fish we got. This is Fisher's fish right here. This guy right here with the stud muffin mutton snapper. We're pretty sure that these are spawning fish. So what I mean is these fish will come in really, really shallow to spawn. They come from offshore and they also come from the grass flats and they'll meet you know, uh, at the edge of the reef, on wrecks, and they'll congregate in just giant numbers. And I think that's why we've been doing so good because the way we're fishing, we're fishing on the sand right on the edge of the reef. And Brooke had the hot hand today. She got a ton of bites. I did have a ton of bites, but they were just outsmarting me. Come on, Fisher, one second. I'm gonna measure this on there. They were just outsmarting me and taking me under the ledge or taking me under a rock. I don't know what it was, but every single fish I was hooking was just getting broken off, cut off on something. It was very, very sad. Yeah, and I lost, I didn't get a single bite until the very end and I got two fish and it was just a big inhale. You could feel they inhaled the bait. And then as soon as that happened, I reeled real, real tight. I was already in a rock. So either muttons or grouper that took us straight to the rocks. How big was that one? 30. 30 inches. That's, that's a pretty damn big mutton. Entire time we were mutton fishing, I was just driving myself crazy because I wasn't getting any bites. And I'm thinking maybe it's this bait, maybe it's that bait. Maybe they don't want my bait. Brick was getting hit on Ballyhoo the whole time, but Brick actually just flayed up a mutton because she's gonna do a catch and cook. But check this out right here. This was inside the mutton snapper's um, belly. This is a crab. We have no idea what kind it is. We've never seen it before, but it looks really, really cool and it's fresh. You can tell that it hasn't really been digested and it also had an eel in it, which goes to show you that these things are probably not that picky. It's just having your bait in the right place at the right time and that technique. So thank you guys for watching this video. I know that I didn't catch a lot, but they had plenty of action and I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks in that next